Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. Hello, podcast land. Hello, guys. Hello, podcast land. What is up today? We're back again. It is now Thursday. I can't believe I almost forgot that I actually have a show today. Because it's weird because I, here's mo, here was my thoughts. My thoughts were this with the new Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays back in the day. I figured I do a Monday show now, okay? I also do a Wednesday show. I thought I did back then. And so as I was adding Pastor Lance to the mix for his Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays episode, I figured, well, I'll I'll re-resurrect the Thursday episode that used to be the the message show was on Thursday. I thought Thursday was a great idea because I thought, you know, Wednesday they would have Bible study, so they won't really want to hear Thursday. And and I mean, Wednesday they had a Bible study, so they don't want to hear Wednesday. Monday I do my message. Tuesday is, you know, right after Monday. And then, you know, so I said Thursday is great. And I'll re-resurrect the, the Thursday episode, which was the actual show, the message show. It was every Thursday, if you guys remember this, if you're, if you're way back when with me. So it was Thursday. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm realizing that I don't need... I'm realizing that the Thursday show should have been like a Friday. It should should have been called Kingdom Collaboration Fridays. But it's not. It's called Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Right after Outside of Classroom Wednesdays. Go figure that one out. (laughs) Speaking of laugh, I'll tell you a quick joke. So, did you hear what happened to Ken and Barbie after they got divorced? Barbie took all of Ken's stuff. That's why. Ken never came with accessories. <laughs> so there's you, a little Barbie and Ken joke. I, I said that to a friend of mine at work because his name actually is Ken. And I had to tell him that joke about Barbie and Ken. So hey, how are we doing today? What is up in your lives? And we're live, live, live. It is truly an amazing feat. And guess what? I got to give God some praise for this because tomorrow we are off for Good Friday. And guess what? We get paid for thank you, Jesus, that we are off on the good Friday and that we get paid for the holiday. And Lord, we want to thank you for sending your son to die on that cross for us in Jesus' name. Amen. It, remember, though, Good Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday is all about Jesus and his resurrection, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. You can't have all, and you can't have any one of those missing. Because if you do, it will not work. If he never died, how can he be buried and rise again? If he died but he's not buried, how can he rise again? You get what I'm saying? All three of them, all three of them, sorry guys, all three of them have to be together for it to work right. Because even if he doesn't resurrect him, we're screwed. But you know what? That's not hap- That didn't happen. He resurrected for us. He became the chief cornerstone in our life. And see, people were confused because he said, people would say, he said, well, I'm going to tear down this temple and rebuild it in three days. And uh, they were confused because they were thinking the church. And they go, well, when must this be? And he says, when the Son of Man was is betrayed. Now, he gave them real doctrine, real scripture. But, he's, but he, what he said was, is he says, I'll rebuild this temple. I will I will tear down this temple and rebuild it in three days. What they didn't realize is that it wasn't the temple that they're in for church. It was the, his temple. His heavenly body was going to be crucified for us. And then he was going to, what, rebuild it, rise again. So, and they didn't know that. And they're, they're thinking, well, this guy is blasphemous. He, if he thinks he can do that in three days. You know how long it took us to rebuild this temple here? Oh, yeah, he ain't going to do that. And then what they don't realize is what he's actually saying. So 
We thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross, that we might be free from the burden of sins. Even though, Lord, if someone out there is still in that sin, you still love them and forgive them and is, and is waiting for them to come out of that sin. So let's get going with this episode, and we're going to get into a few but brief announcements, starting with number one, you can go to communitycloud222 at gmail.com, spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D-222 at G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. And guess what you can do right there? Well, you can send me all of your prayer requests, even even if you want to shout you on the podcast, send me your first name, your city, and your state, and I'll shout out to you on TGIF, or Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first also guys be aware you can call us at 1-302-448-8443 again that's 1-302-448-TGIF where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first also guys want you to be vitally aware that we're going to be doing next week's episode of Outside the Classroom Wednesdays with our host Dr. Scott Mullen Dr. Scott Mullen. Enjoy Outside of Classroom Wednesdays. And I do believe that's going to be, I'm not sure yet what message is going on yet, but I did the one to build the stone the builders rejected, because the Bible says that Jesus is the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected. Now next week may not be the uh, may not be the third of part of the um, Sermon on the Mount, but it might be. So I don't know. It's whatever he decides. He's gonna send me another, another uh, message in, in the next couple. With that being said, be aware we're doing this week's episode of Outside the Classroom Wednesday. No, uh, Worship Saturdays where we do nothing but praise, prayer, and worship. Grab your favorite drink. I got mine right here. It is a full, delish diet Mountain Dew. And I'm gonna take me this way to you guys. Toast. There you go. I toasted to you guys. But well, grab your favorite drink, relax in your favorite lounge chair, and enjoy the fabulous music we here have on the show. Because all we do is praise, prayer, and worship. That's it. Also, guys, be aware that the rumble is going to happen soon, just not yet. We're looking forward to it by July twenty seventh of next year. Mm. A whole year after the Cali trip, we're, we're looking for the rumble to happen. With that being said, I got some prospects I can talk to. Like at the end of this month, we're having another chaplain's meeting. I got some people, if they really want to, we can do a conference call and they can all chime in and we can do this. So, with that being said, also guys, be aware. Be aware you can download this app. It's called Podcast Portal, spelled P O D. C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the App Trade Market. And guess what you can do right on this app? You can like, comment, subscribe to every single episode straight from the app. You can even download and view the chapters button. So basically, to download it, I'll tell you one last time. You should remember this though. But go to the Podcast Portal app. And then when you see the episode you want to download, click the, the download button. Well, first play the play the uh, show, and a commercial starts. When the commercial starts, hit the download button. Second from the last on the the logo part of the of the picture, click the the download button. Once it starts downloading, stop the episode from playing, and then just let it download. It'll download straight to your computer. No, or your phone, wherever you're using the app on for Android only at this moment. I'm trying to get Windows situated right now, but Apple at this moment. And then you can download the episode, you can share it with people and all the other stuff. You can also view the chapters button that shows you everything that was done on the show today. So if I did Born Again and say Tears Are a Language and I did a message, if you want to hear Tears Are a Language, just click on it. It plays just Tears Are a Language. If you want to do Born Again, click on it. It just does Born Again. If you want to hear just the message, 
click on just the message <clears throat> and guess what <clears throat> it plays just the message excuse her for a minute also guys you can connect with us through the app you can you can connect with us through facebook twitter and email straight from the app yes email go to the bottom right hand corner of any page it looks like an envelope it's the email button click on it and then click on your email client type click always remember click always that's key and then once you click always type in your email and hit send it's that simple and easy you're sending in a message straight to us via the app and it's absolute 100 percent phenomenal but just be aware when you do it you put in there prayer giving or whatever make sure that the subject line has an indication of who you are so i don't think you're spam and i put you in my spam folder and i don't look at you so make sure you put prayer uh donation or anything or music request or whatever the case is we can, you can request a song if you really want to. I don't mind you requesting a song. Every once a week, I'd like to have a listener request a song that we play on the show. So, <clears throat> there you go. You can send an, an email straight from the app. Also, you can view the... Uh, you can DM us, DM us on Twitter, and you can view the blog that we got going on for the app. I'm going to check that out be, right as I play Dr. I mean, Pastor Lance's message. I'll check the blog right now and make sure it's updated properly. And yeah, you can view the, the blog we got for the app and everything. It's going to be amazing. Also, guys, what you can do on this app is you can listen to the four play buttons. 95 Fight the Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. KJIC out of Texas. My former church, Evangelical Christian Churches. And my former church down here, Portage Community Chapel. For 95 Fight the Fish and KJIC, click their buttons. It plays the radio stations. For the Evangel button, click on the Evangel button, and it takes you to their uh, YouTube page. Click on one of their videos, and you're instantly seeing and hearing their videos. With the Portage Community Colored Abstract button, I call it, because it doesn't have the words in there yet. It's got some blues, some greens, and some browns. Just click on that button. It's below the Evangel button. Click. It takes you to their About Bible page. Click on where it says Videos, and then click on a video that does not say Upcoming. Hit the Play button. It's that easy. So, so that's how you can listen to the play buttons. Now, finally, my favorite part of the app is the portal chat feature. We can chat with whoever owns this app. If 500 people own this app, you can chat with 500 different people around the world. You can send pictures and PM everybody. Just be careful. If you see, hear, or anything, see, hear, or witness anything that's inappropriate sexually or bullying or whatnot, let me know. I'll, I'll warn them. If they do the same offense again, I'll ban them for a week. If they do the same offense one last time, I will ban them for indefinite. Now, you can have all the political beliefs and stuff, talk all about that stuff. But as soon as you start being, you know, mean, racial, sexual, or not, that's where we draw the line. You can have a free speech on the app, on the chat feature. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna hurt me one bit that you have a that you have your political beliefs. And you can talk about the stuff, and you got a free choice to discuss whatever you want to discuss as long as it's, you know, appropriate, not NSFW stuff. You get my point? And other things. With that being said, you can even take a picture. So you take a picture of your camera roll f with your phone camera, save it to your camera roll, go into the app, click on the portal chat feature, click on where the little picture of the camera is, click on upload picture, Select a picture you want to upload and then hit send. You're instantly sending a picture to TGIF where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, also, 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 the app is wonderful. That was Podcast Portal. Again, guys, one last thing. Ask your Alexa device. Say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. Portal. And she'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. You also got the skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal, and she say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements for today. Let's get into the main song of the show. And the main song is actually a good song. And it's not un it's not unknown artist or anything. It's not anything track one unknown artist. It is... I just lost my train of thought. 
Do we two seconds here? Yes, it is roast beef and cheddar on rye. Now, why did I say roast beef and cheddar on rye? Don't know. It is burning. It is. Excuse me there for a minute. It's not, it's not, um, it's not track one by unknown artist. It's not. It's I Do Declare by my guest on the show, Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Enjoy, I Do Declare.
There you go, guys. That was I Do Declare by none other than my guest on the show, Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. And no, that was not... I lost it again now. And no, that was not... Uh, roast beef and cheddar on rye bread. <laughs> I can't believe I said it was roast beef and cheddar on rye bread. How... how, how how fancy is that of me? Let's get into today's message from Pastor Lance and Ornissa Travis on this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. And he actually, I got some content for today and next week because he actually did Bible study for Evangel, my church in Michigan. Excuse me. And he did an inner, an inner healing message, which Dr. Cheryl was supposed to preach, but she was not able to at that moment, so he does an inner healing message. So, enjoy Inner Healing by Pastor Lance and Ornissa Travis on this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Enjoy the message. Uh, so glad to have you on here with us, and uh, thank you, God, for tonight's Bible study. And particularly, it's the first Wednesday of the month where we have our inner healing and deliverance teaching. And uh, it may look like, thank you, there you go. Well, I'm telling you, them uh, technicians are doing such an incredible job. Thank you uh, for putting us in and making the screen a little bit bigger. And I, tonight, am the facilitator, Pastor Lance Travis. And I'm filling in, first of all, for Dr. Uh, Cheryl Christopher, our pastor and apostle. And we thank God for her and giving us this opportunity. And we thank God also for Dr. Sharon Smith, who normally teaches on Wednesday nights. And uh, as you can see, I'm a little laid back tonight. And uh, matter of fact, we're going to talk about uh, strongholds tonight as we get into inner healing and deliverance. And um, one of the things I faced today, this morning, uh, in talking about strongholds, is being so concerned about uh, I was dressed and my appearance. And uh, thank God for a couple of my sisters that kind of really helped me out uh, to let me know that it, it was uh, more important uh, to focus on what I had to say and uh, what God's given me as opposed to what I'm wearing. Uh, thank you, Lord. So uh, we are just so grateful to be here with you tonight and just thank you, God. There's so many wonderful and exciting things happening here at Evangel. Uh, this is a wonderful time to be at Evangel. Uh, this is such a great time to get plugged in. And I'm telling you, God's doing some amazing things in this house uh, where we are experiencing uh, miracle signs and wonders. Uh, no, we haven't seen a leg grow out yet, uh, but we've seen healing and restoration and deliverance taking place in the lives of people. Uh, and we are just so grateful to God for that and uh, to be a part of a church that is growing and thriving growing and thriving, and we're excited about that, and we thank God for all that he's doing um, and how that he continues uh, to work, his work of grace in our lives. Um, now, while I have you on here, I want to encourage you to come meet with us uh, Friday afternoon from 12 to 3. We're having our Good Friday service, and oh, I'm telling you, we've got some amazing things planned, uh, where there's going to be speakers, uh, there's going to be some dance and drama, uh, but it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, and we have foot washing. Yeah, I know for some people it's a thing to pass they did years ago, but I'm telling you, just last year we experienced a tremendous outpour of the Holy Spirit uh, as we served one another, washed each other's feet, and prayed over each other and served. And, and I'm telling you, God really manifests His power in a great way. Uh, but then also, Sunday morning, uh, we're going to be here. Friday, we're going to uh, celebrate and acknowledge uh, the death of uh, our Lord Jesus. Is uh, why it's Good Friday because a whole lot of good things happened as a result of his dying. Uh, amen. I'm so glad that uh, when Jesus died, it didn't end there. That was not the end of the story. Hallelujah. Uh, but thank God that, that he rose again. And yes, Sunday morning, we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, there's going to be some exciting things happening on Resurrection Sunday, uh, because especially for our children, while there's going to be worship, there's going to be a short message. But 
but it's also going to be uh, a petting zoo. And uh, where live animals will be here and will be able to feed animals as well. Uh, so it's going to be a lot going on, and there's going to be a scavenger hunt for the children. I still don't understand why grandparents can't get in there and find some candy, but it's okay. Uh, there's going to be a great time and lots of excitement here at Evangel Christian Churches, 28491 Beautiful Road here in Roseville, Michigan. Please come join us and uh, worship the living God and have great family time with us. Sunday, 10, 15 a.m. Hope to see you there. Praise the Lord. And all right, now for the business at hand. Uh, tonight we want to talk about uh, strongholds. And I think uh, every month we say the first Wednesday of the month, we actually uh, have Dr. Cheryl, who's usually here to minister to us uh, regarding inner healing and deliverance. And one of the things that uh, is important and applicable to uh, inner healing uh, and deliverance is to talk about strongholds, yokes, and bondages. And I'm actually taking excerpts from the book that uh, Dr. Jerry and Dr. Cheryl wrote, uh, Spiritual Warfare, Confidence Guide to Personal Healing and Deliverance. If you don't have this book, please uh, be sure to get it. You have it here at the bookstore. You can uh, order it uh, on several other platforms where they sell books. But please uh, get this book. Spiritual warfare, comprehensive guide to personal healing and deliverance. All right. Now, those of you that know Pastor Lance know that I'm not a fast talker, so I need to slow down so I won't say some crazy stuff. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, but uh, tonight, I want to, uh, for our, our base scripture, to turn to 2 Corinthians and chapter 10. Then, as I said, we're going to read excerpts uh, from our textbook tonight. And just share with you some things that I pray encourages you and things that give you some insight into maybe some strongholds, some struggles uh, that you've had in your life. And for some folks, those struggles have not just been uh, since you've been saved and wrestling with the devil, uh, but uh, pray that there is uh, information given you that will give you to understand how that some of the struggles have been lifelong. But we believe that there's hope there is an answer for us in Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to begin reading from verse 3. And uh, then we're going to just share with you as much as God puts in our hearts concerning strongholds and overcoming. Verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Come on, say strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity. Say every thought. Bringing every thought into captivity. To the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And one of the things I love is the Passion Translation, and I love the way it reads uh, in this translation. And uh, from it, it reads uh, from verse 3, the world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair. I mean, the world don't fight fair. But we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have, and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. Now, that's a mouthful. That's a lot. Uh, and the thing that's important to note is that God has given us the tool and the ability to demolish those things that are corrupt and manipulative. We use our powerful God tools for smashing war philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into 
maturity. Hallelujah. Now, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise tonight. And Holy Spirit, we yield to you the right way. And we ask tonight that you give us grace, anoint us, speak and minister grace to those that hear tonight. And Lord, we pray not only that you speak through us, but Holy Spirit, that you would manifest the deliverance in the hearts of your people. Those that are here, those that are watching live stream, that you would minister healing, that you would get answer to the thoughts that have caused us to struggle for years. Father, we thank you now, and we give you praise for your Holy Spirit that's at work now in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, we yield to you the right way. Have your way in us. We'll continue to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, I just I want to read some excerpts from uh, Dr. Cheryl and Dr. Gary's a book uh, regarding spiritual warfare, confidence of God, personal healing and deliverance. And uh, in chapter 13 of the book, uh, they state that spiritual warfare is often thought as a unidirectional attack. We fight against powers, principalities, and rulers of this dark world. However, spiritual warfare is not one dimensional. The Bible speaks about a second enemy that we war against. I love this opening statement of this chapter because what it really points to, first of all, is understanding that in warfare, it is not unidimensional. It's not one dimensional. It's not just one thing that the enemy goes after and attacks because if there was only one thing that he looked at and he attacked or tackled one thing at a time, warfare would not be so difficult. If there was only one thing that the enemy addressed. Have you ever heard folks say that? Sometimes it seems like when I get through one thing, here comes another. When one problem gets solved, here comes another. And uh, we even say, we got to be careful what we say too. Uh, we even say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Glory to God. And it's because the enemy is not just one dimensional, but he's multidimensional which means that there's several areas of attack that he's after because he's strategic in his attack, attack first of all, uh, but also because he wants to completely dismantle you. Remember the words of Jesus? He said that the thief comes not but to kill and to steal, uh, but to destroy. He's not just trying to upset you. He's not just trying to throw you off. But the plan and the plot of the enemy is to completely destroy you, if not your physical life, <laughs> to destroy your ability to continue to believe. So that's why he always attacks. And what's interesting, it seems like those attacks are so strategic that what he goes after is the things that we value the most, the thing that we hold dearest to us. He goes after them because, once again, the attack is strategic. But thank God, and that's why we read through 2 Corinthians chapter 10, to let you know that no matter what the attack is, even though it may be multi-dimensional, uh, 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 glory to God, multi-dimensional, uh, while he's after more than one thing at the same time, God's given us tools to wage a good warfare, to not only uh, uh, stop the enemy's attack, but to overcome and to overcome it. We don't have to be subject to a barrage of attacks and say, oh, the devil is just busy. We're just going through something. No, there's something that he's after. But I may know when I walk with God that there should be some things that we are after. Praise God. Uh, there should be things that we're pressing forward into and seeking from God. Uh, and again, uh, I, I, the chapter goes on to say that the Bible speaks about a second enemy that we war against. And while sometimes we try to spiritualize things for the enemy, after our peace, and he is, uh, the enemy is just after our prayer life, and yes, he is. Uh, but the thing is, is that he is not the only, the only enemy. There's another enemy that we face. And the enemy that we face more often than not, finding your walk, 
and even more than the devil himself, the enemy that we face more often than not is the enemy within. Somebody who told me years ago said that the enemy is in a me. <laughs> the enemy that I face is the enemy on the inside. Uh, our flesh is more of an enemy than any demon or devil. Well, somebody said, how could that be? The devil's always at me. The devil's always doing something. He's always stirring something. He hits everything in my house. So how is it that he can be a, the biggest enemy? Because the greatest enemy that we face in life is the enemy that is between our ears. Huh? The greatest enemy that we face is the enemy of our minds. So that's why I want to talk about strongholds tonight. Because strongholds uh, tend to have a lot to do with what goes on in your mind. Strongholds are not just some demon that's come upon you that has a strong grip on your life. But strongholds are the result of a demon that has come but is there because of doors that have been opened. Because of belief systems that we formed. And we'll talk about that some more too. Uh, it is not just an evil force. Do you realize that sometimes the most evil force that we experience is the way that we think? Not only can you get in bondage as a result of the way that you think, that also the key to your deliverance can be the way. You think. Well, look at somebody and ask them, what are you thinking about? And those are your live stream. Put that in your comments. What are you thinking about? Yeah, because a lot of trouble that we get in, a lot of habits that are formed, a lot of attacks that occur are the result of our thinking. And the flesh is as much of our enemy as demons are. And they use the flesh against us. Now it's hard enough praying against, praying about the enemy of our soul that comes. But it becomes even more difficult when you got to pray about the demon's attack and the lust of your flesh that works in cahoots to get you tripped up. Now I know that uh, I'm using uh, East Side of Detroit language. Um, I'm sorry, that's who I am. That's where I come from. Uh, but I'm sure also it makes clear the point that the enemy works with your flesh. And that's why the scripture tells us to crucify the flesh, not just the flesh alone, but crucify the flesh with its lusts. Because there are things that your flesh desires that opposes God's will. Let's go a little deeper. We know that Jesus came to set us free from our enemies. Yet there are many believers that are bound by strongholds, yokes, and bondages in their spirit and flesh, uh, which is the seat of their mind, will, emotions, and body. These dominate and control us like puppets on a string. Anybody ever had times in your life where they're thinking that you knew were wrong? That you didn't want invading your life? You didn't want to give in to, but before you knew it, you were giving in the things that you were drawn to. Okay? Just like puppets on a string. And Satan has convinced us that we have no way out and no path to freedom. But how many know the devil is a liar? That's all he does. He lies all the time. He will lie to you every chance he gets and lie to you about who you are. And lie to you about the resources that you have as if you're fighting a losing battle. But as the devil is a liar, the battle that you're fighting is not a losing one, but it's a winning battle. Because how many know that when we fight and we war, that we fight from the place of victory? Because the victory is already won through Jesus. So that's why Paul lets us know in here in chapter 10 in 2 Corinthians that. Though we war in the flesh, in this, these physical bodies, 
The weapons that we use are not fleshly. We live in the body, but we don't fight fleshly wars. You cannot win a spiritual battle with fleshly weapons. You have to fight spiritual battles with spiritual tools. I'm going to know that you will never win by cussing. Yeah, you'll never win by snapping off on folks. You'll never win, glory to God, by giving in physical altercations. But what they will do is set up patterns of thinking where Satan himself can deceive you time and time again. Why? Because he sees that there's a pattern, there are things that you are weak to. You ever notice that there's certain things that you always seem to struggle with? Let's dig a little deeper. So, Paul talks about 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and particularly uh, verse 4 the weapons of our warfare are not high, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, pulling down strongholds. I love the, the book I read two years ago by uh, Francis Franciapani. And the book was entitled To the Pulling Down of Strongholds. And in this book, he described strongholds as being a house of thoughts. Where did he get that from? Remember growing up, we would take a deck of cards and we would take one card and stack it on top of the other card, building this house of cards. And in his description, what he says is that, therefore, just like that house of cards is built and one is stacked on top of the other, that we also, because of the, the things that we have believed, because behind every stronghold is a lie. Let me say that again and write that in your comments. Behind every stronghold is a lie, which is to say, that strongholds are developed when we believe lies about ourselves. You're too big. You're too dark. You're too ugly. You're dumb. You're not smart enough. You're inadequate. You don't measure up. You're not pretty enough. Your hair is not long enough. You're too short. Things that we have believed uh, that were lies that causes us to have a sense of inadequacy about ourselves. How I many you know that that's not what God's word says about it? God says, word says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. God uniquely and specifically designed you when he made you. So, weapons of our warfare are not common, but he says they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Now, there's a lot of language used here in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 10 because he goes on to say in verse 5 to cast down arguments. To cast down arguments. And we were just talking about words that are said to you, things that are said about you from the enemy. Now, it is therefore up to us to either accept what is said to us or thrown to us or to reject it and replace it with God's word. Strongholds, it's important to know, are also, first of all, developed or established in the mind. The first place he, he aims for, and he tr establishes the lies, is in your mind. Somebody also calls it lie-based thinking. Lie-based thinking. Thinking. And I'm trying not to rush through this because it, when you say these type of things, it tends to cause you to think about, you know, things growing up that you believe, things that people said to you that you believe, experiences that you went through and you believe that you were not good or that you were not adequate or that uh, you were faulty because things happened to you or their lives. I'm going to listen to somebody tell me it's just a lie. So, because strongholds are first of all established in the mind, that's why we are told by Paul to take 
every thought captive. Take every thought captive. Which is to say that therefore we can't afford to say, oh, well, you know, it's just one of those things. Oh, well, that's just another a negative thought that flows through my mind. Oh, well, you know, I did go through this. And I did uh, say these things and, you know, and I was told that I would never measure up and I would be just like my old drunk uncle and I wouldn't be no good. And, yeah, and we say, well, you know, it was just one of them things. And I'm here to tell you, it's not just one of those things. That it is a strategically implanted thought intended to cause us to develop a system of beliefs based on lies. I ain't got nothing else to say. I wanted that to marinate. Yeah. Based on lies. That's why we told to take every thought captive. Behind the stronghold is also a lie. And listen at this. With a lie being behind a stronghold, because it is a lie, then therefore it becomes a place of personal bondage where God's word is subjugated to any unscriptural idea or personally confused belief to be held to. In other words, God's word has been made to become subject to the lie. The, the lie, the lie, therefore, has become God. The lie has been the thing that we uh, held on to. I asked a question not long ago. Uh, I was teaching uh, at Destiny. And I asked the students, as we were talking about this, the class was about vision, but I asked them, what is it that you really believe? Of course, when you ask people that, the first thing they'll say is, that, well, I believe that Jesus is Lord. And I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And we do believe that. Uh, and I believe uh, that I'm the head of the yeah, 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 and that's true, too, and we do believe that. But the question probed a little deeper. What is it that you really believe at the core of you? What is it that you believe that causes you to only go so far in life? What is it that you believe about you that causes you to reach for more and then stop and say, I can't go no further than that. What is it that you believe that causes you to pray and then say, only God can do so much? Something to think about. Something to think about. Because I believe that when we really explore that, explore what it is we really believe at the core of who we are, you know the thing that causes you to not finish assigned tasks? The things that causes you to dream and want things, but really never give everything that you've got to go after it. There's something that we believe that has caused us to stop short of our dreams, goals, and vision. I know that's pretty deep. I, I, I know that's not easy to hear. The truth of the matter, except for one day, we all face that. The truth also is that whatever it is that has caused us to believe that we're not enough is the lie. I'm so glad I learned to not get intimidated or thrown off when there's a dead silence. I remember serving years ago under an apostle and he would say things and you could tell that it was reaching the heart and it would there would be that dead silence and he would always say ah that's the anointing I loved it because he was absolutely right uh, that was the part where the anointing was reaching that place where we believe something that's not true there's something that you believe about you that is not true and we cause or allow God's word to be subject to that thing. Because we've been told that as a child. We've been told that as an adolescent. 
And when crazy stuff started happening, when we became young adults, we believed that. So why in the world am I talking about this stuff tonight? Because one of the things that we want to do, and it's very much part of the whole idea of spiritual warfare, in the healing and deliverance, is because we not only want to cause you to think, but we want to expose the lies of the devil. And the thing that demons never want, never to be exposed. Y'all super quiet tonight. <laughs> Am I speaking true? Demons never, and I mean never, want to be exposed. So much so that the other lie that causes strongholds, the other lie that he causes us to believe is that if we don't say anything, it'll go away. If we just leave it alone, it'll get better. I'm going to look at somebody and tell them that's a lie. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can do it. We can, we can trick and believe it. That it's going to get better after a while if we just don't mess with it. And then the enemy therefore keeps you away from the truth that if you expose what is there, then you give God an opportunity to work in that area that you struggle. I remember years ago, God said to me, in a time that I was terrified in life, and I actually audibly heard the voice of God speaking to me. It's not a whole lot of times I can say that, but this was one of those times where just like I'm talking to you, you can hear my voice. I audibly heard God speak to me and said, what you conceal, you know, hide. What you conceal, I cannot heal. But what you reveal, I will heal. He didn't say, I can heal. He said, what you reveal, I will heal. I'm going to write that in your comments. What you conceal, I cannot heal. But what you reveal, I will heal. And that's, what, that's what God wants. He wants us to cast down arguments, imaginations, thoughts that run through your mind. Don't just take for granted it's just one of them thoughts. Oh, they're just, the, the devil is busy. I don't care if they call you paranoid. I don't care if they call you uh, Mr. Anxiety. Listen, if you hear anything that's negative, damaging, or opposes God's word, put a stop to it and put God's word on it. Hey, that one was over real big. <laughs> and listen at this. The enemy wants you to believe the, the lie. Because there are ideas that he gives, which are personally confused beliefs that are held to be true. And watch this. This is what behind every fear is a lie. Behind every fear. What things are you fearful of? Isn't it amazing how that we tend to fear things and we become anxious about stuff? That never even happens. Behind every fear is a lie. And behind every lie is an idol. Behind every lie is a fear, and behind every fear is an idol. That was so powerful for me as the Holy Spirit gave me revelation some years ago that there were things that happened to me as a child. And because of the fear that I had, I hid them and buried them. And we not only buried them, but we have a tendency to even protect those things. What do you mean protect them? Because we won't tell nobody about it. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want nobody to talk to us about it. We don't want them touching that particular area. We guard it and we protect it. And it is that thing that becomes an idol. Because when we guard and protect it and keep it secret, we therefore uh, worship it. It is a form of worship. It becomes an idol. 
in our celebrate recovery ministry, first time I ever heard this, I was just studying men earlier at men's Bible study. The first time that I heard it, it blew me away. There's something that is so simple, but for me, it was so powerful. The first time I heard this tape, and you can write this in your comments as well, that you are as sick as your secrets. Yeah, I, I hear you, you, the sounds you're making out there, and I did the same thing the first time I heard it. Ooh. Because when I heard the statement, it brought a lot of things in mind that I held secret. You are as sick as your secrets. And you know, people talk about folks oh, who divulge everything. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you are tell everybody who are all your business. I'm not saying that. There ought to be somebody that you can find in life that you can trust and talk to. And thank God here, we have inner human seminars where you can come, you can write things down, and you can tell somebody things that have hurt you most. Where they will pray with you, they will intercede. Where those things can not only be surfaced, but can be called out when you receive deliverance from them and pray and minister healing to you. But the key here is revealing the things that we have held secret. People that are still right now, I love it when I see kids flying out. Um, you are as sick as your secrets. Behind every lie is a fear, behind every fear is an idol. Idols are established wherever there exists a failure to trust in the provisions of God. And for me, that touches on the whole subject of inner vow. Where people have made vows instead of saying, you know, oh God, this really hurts, but I'm going to trust God because I know He can do anything. I know that He watches over me, He protects me, He keeps me. Instead of saying that, what we say and make it in our vows is, I ain't going to let nobody hurt me again. Ain't nobody going to ever do me like they did. Or, or we will say, that's the last time. I'm going to let somebody do that to me. Now I'm understanding that when we make that kind of vow, what we say is that God is not enough to protect me. Okay, that's another one of those spots where I'm just letting it marinate. <laughs> what we say is that I don't trust God to keep me. I got to keep myself. I got to protect myself. And I say, well, just busy. forget that. If you forgive, I'll take care of it. Give it to me. I don't know. That hurt real bad. I ain't trying to let nobody else do that to me. Just like saying, God, you're good, but you ain't good enough. You're powerful, but you're not powerful enough for this. Why don't we develop an attitude? See, actually, if I can get that out of my mouth. Why do we develop that kind of attitude? Because the thing that we go through not only affects our thinking, but it also affects our attitude. Now, I could spend the rest of the night talking about attitude, you know, but then I'm going to bypass that one. Uh, because Jesus, ooh, I'm so glad that he saved our, our, our soul and uh, that we are born again. And that we are yet working on our attitudes. I ain't never seen so many people speak in tongues that have raggedy attitudes. But anyway, okay, that, that's not so. Um, Sorry, live stream, I'm different. Dr. Sharon will be back. You get me. Um, Idols are established wherever there exists a failure to trust in the provisions of God that are ours through Jesus Christ. Where the enemy makes you think not only that God is not enough, but that those, those provisions don't extend to you. And listen, the provisions are not limited to things. It's amazing how when we think about God providing, we think about God providing things. 
But the provision that God gives us is to also minister healing to the areas that we hurt most. God provides for our healing. God provides for our deliverance. God provides for the thing that, that we've been uh, struggling with most of our lives. So we doubt that God's able to provide the area that we struggle with most. And the enemy in his attack, because it's strategic, spreads the lie that, well, you know, some people are just strong in their faith. And other people just struggle and have things that they are go through and, and they have habits and addictions that are going to be within the rest of their lives. And this just going to hurt the rest of their lives. Look at somebody again and say, that's a lie. The, the devil is a lie. <laughs> I just don't believe that there are some things I have to struggle with. Glory to God. I just believe there are some hurts that I just don't have to have. And because I believe that, there are things now that don't hurt me, that did hurt me at one time. The things that I did struggle with, I don't struggle with no more. And there are some things God still helping me with. Tell somebody else, don't believe the lie. Some of the weapons that pull down these strongholds are God's word, the blood of the cross, and the name of Jesus. Now, I, I like the way how Paul uses pictures in his words because he describes this a warfare action as the pulling down of strongholds. I mentioned to you earlier about the book that I read uh, some years ago called The Pulling Down of Strongholds by Francis Frangipani. And one of the things he said in this book is that Pulling down strongholds are not like you reach up and grab some leather and pull something down. But pulling down strongholds are like the act of a wrecking ball. You know how the wrecking ball swings back and forth, and every time it hits the building, it knocks off a certain part of it, but it keeps swinging, and it hits, and it knocks down another, and it keeps knocking, and it keeps hitting it until the building is completely level. Listen, that is exactly what happens in warfare and the pulling down the stronger. That's why no matter what it says to you, no matter what you hear, no matter what lie uh, you are told, you've got to consistently read and apply God's word. That's why I thank God for Dr. Cheryl, who constantly tells us to not only just read and study the word, but pray the word in your prayers. Open up your Bible. Stop praying Psalm 91 over your life. Because when you pray Psalm 91 in your life, Psalm 91 acts like a wrecking ball that swings and hits that building. And yeah, there might be other things that rise up, but guess what? If it work uh, knocking this other thing down and demolishing it, then guess what? It'll work and knock this thing down and demolish it. So the more I pray Psalm 91, the more it hits and levels the thing that was a struggle for me. Let me say this, and I say this before I finish. And that is why we also got to be careful of what things we allow into our gates. You got to be careful what stuff you watch. And please, God, I wish I had another hour because I could talk about what we watch on TV. Yeah. Because nowadays, you don't just see Abbott and Costello, you know, hitting each other upside the head and falling off buildings. Hey, hi, we're back. No. Now, you got me and kissing screen each other. Now you got folk with all kinds of scenes. Now you got the most violent stuff. Yeah. And the thing about it, you, you got to understand that one of the things about the stronghold and that pattern of thinking, and that's the other thing that describes strongholds, an ungodly pattern of thinking. I ain't got time to you know, survey on that. About what thought patterns we have, things that we think about over and over and over. Sometimes when there's been trauma and abuse and crisis in our life, and especially when it's been great crisis or great trauma, and I've had great trauma in my life, 
We tend to rehearse what happened. We tend to rehearse what was said. Because sometimes trauma can come by stuff that's said to you. And we rehearse it over and over. And the crazy thing about trauma, as it relates even to PTSD, that you don't just rehearse it and see it again, but the emotions are felt as if it just happened all over again. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's why it's so important to come back everything you hear, every lie, every argument that opposes Christ. Combat it with God's word. If you don't know any other verse, any other passage of scripture, open up Psalm 91 and start every single day praying Psalm 91 over your life. Because if being acts like that wrecking ball, as I said, and it levels the building completely, turns it into stone. Because the thing is, we said earlier, that strongholds are that house of thoughts. They also become what's called like a citadel. And a citadel is the building of fortress that's built up. That's a secure place. The unfortunate thing about citadels and fortresses is that nothing gets in, nothing comes out. So whatever is in your head stays in your head. So is that plain enough now? You ain't no good. You ain't gonna measure up. You deserve to be hurt. Stay stuck in your head. And that is why, because it's a fortress, I love Again, the language of God's word. Because it didn't tell us to try to grab and just pick out this or pick out that. No. Get the word of God. Get that wrecking ball and knock the whole doggone thing down. Demolish it. You are called to be a demolition crew in the spirit. Demolish that pattern of thinking. And let me tell you something else. Let's, let's, let's dispel another myth or lie. Because the enemy will tell you, well, you are 65 years old, and you've been going through this 60 of them 65 years. So it's, you just might as well leave it alone, because that's the way it's going to be. Y'all know what I'm going to say next. Should have already been looking at somebody else. Look at him again and say, that's a lie. Because it doesn't matter whether you're six years old or 76. The word of God yet demolishes strong. It demolishes ungodly patterns of thought. Let that one marinate too. Since I'm going to use Friday, I'm getting it out tonight. Glory to God. Strongholds are pulled down to demolish. And listen at this. Confronted bondage is broken as these spiritual weapons of our warfare are employed. The key words, confronted bondage. Areas that you know you struggle in. Things that you have difficulty that causes you from believing or moving forward or trusting God. Those are the areas you've got to learn to confront with God's word. Confront them with the blood. Confront them with the name of Jesus. You got to get to the point, and we talked about attitudes, but when you do develop, develop the attitude where you say, I ain't going for it no more. Now, I know everybody didn't grow up on the east side like I did, but uh, just because I'm up here and I'm from the east side, I want you to look at somebody and tell them, I ain't having it. Sometimes you have to develop an attitude against the enemy. I ain't having it. And you can say with your faith, I'm tired of this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And because I'm sick and tired, I'm going to do something about it. Every resource you need, every tool you need is in God's word. Don't believe the lie that you just have to let it happen. You just have to put up with it. That's another one. That's a big one. That you just have to put up with it. Anybody ever heard that before? 
You just have to put up with it. Come over to somebody else. That's a lot. The old preachers used to say, you really can walk heavy now. But <laughs> even in your marriage, when you see things going crazy, don't just say, oh, well, well it's just going to be a rough time. Oh, gee. No, no. Well, I, you know, I just got to deal with this. You know, uh, marriage is just a ball and chain. But there's somebody else that said, that's a lot. <laughs> Please say that's a lot. Marriage is not a ball and chain. God's giving you authority. He's giving you ability. He's giving you exousia, and he's giving you dunamis. He's giving you the ability and the authority to speak to the crazy stuff going on in your life. And not just settle for it. Strongholds have everything to do with the way we think about things. Bondages that comes in our lives. And you know the lies and deceptions are like spider's webs that entangle us in feelings of hopelessness and despair, which is why people think that, well, oh, this is the way it is. Doesn't that sound like despair? Well, oh, this is, you know, everybody got to go through something. Yeah, but I ain't got to go through this. Right. We'll look at somebody again. Tell them, That's a lie. But the good news is that the gospel of Jesus Christ is it's exactly that. It's good news. Jesus paid the price for our freedom and wants to give us abundant life that includes shattering the strongholds, demolishing them. Come on and say demolish. demolish. God has called you to demolish the lies of the enemy. Amen. To demolish lie-based thinking. To absolutely crush to annihilate. Y'all know Dr. Sh Dr. Sheriff, that's why she gets up here the first Wednesday of every month when she's praying. She prays. She cries out. We demolish. We crush. We smash. Somebody said, whoo, those are violent words. You doggone right they are. Because how many know that the warfare is violent? How many know that the enemy that comes against you is not going to take it easy with you because you're having a bad day? But the time that you're having a bad day is the time that he wants to completely destroy you and cripple you in your mind to cause you to only believe the lie that was spoken to you. Hallelujah. Today, we declare that we refuse to leave the lies in the that God's going to help us to demolish, to crush, to smash, to annihilate. When I pray, right, in my prayers, I say exactly that. That there's certain things that I see that go on, uh, not only around me and in the church and in my household, but how about in me? And I cry out to God, God, I smash, I crush, I, I annihilate, I demolish. Fear, anxiety. Call it out. And smash it. Crush it. And keep doing that. Keep praying Psalm 91. Keep annihilating. Keep smashing. I got to say this before I leave. Because I wanted to have the right perspective. Because we're to smash and demolish those things. But we're not to annihilate one another. Now God didn't call us to do that. It's not the plan. Look at somebody tell them that's not the plan. <laughs> Glory to God. That is not the plan. The lies of the devil, those forces that work in our mind. Sometimes the things you, you won't see things that happen in the physical and natural realm, but there's always things going on in the spirit realm. There's always things that enemy is suggesting to your mind because if he can get you to believe the lie, he therefore knows that you're going to operate in fear. And if you operate in fear, then you're not going to walk in faith. 
want to leave you with this. And then we're going to pray. That one of the things in the scripture that I love so much is first John. But John says, perfect love, which is mature, complete love, casts out fear. Because fear has torment. And he who fears is not made perfect in love. Isn't that interesting? We think that when a person is fearful of it, it's something they scared of, they made their past. No, John said there's something deeper. When a person is fearful, there's a shortage somewhere in their love, love where that's not mature or complete. So when I'm short somewhere in your love, because perfect, sure, complete love casts out fear. And John gives a little bit more insight. What he says after that, he says, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love, which is to say that folk are fearful. They fear being punished. Not understanding that God loves you unconditionally. He loves you in spite of. He loves you no matter what. He loves you. He loves you forever. And mature love. I was in a men's Bible study and I heard the guy say, you know, I don't, I don't know if I can love like that. And I was like, well, I said, no, because I've been hurt so much. Again, fear is afraid of punishment. Well, in other words, that I'm going to be hurt again. You ever heard people say, well, I'm just ain't loving. I ain't getting married. Uh, I'm not loving nobody because if I take a chance of loving, I'm going to get hurt and I don't want to be hurt. So, I restrain my love. Understanding that what really sets you free is your ability to consistently love no matter how you feel. No matter what happens. Because agape, God's unconditional love, is not dependent on another person's response. Right. Complete, mature love. Pass out, gets rid of, dispels fear. Remember where I said behind every lie is a fear. Behind the fear is an idol. Tonight, let's ask God to help us so that we can get rid of these idols. God bless you tonight. We thank God so much for those of you that are watching live stream. We want to encourage you to continue to, to view this ministry every Wednesday night. Same time, same place. God bless you. God keep you. We're so glad that you tuned in to be with us tonight and pray God's very best for your life. Remember, we love you tonight, and we thank God for you. Yes, every one of you. Uh, God bless you. God keep you. Bless your families. And we look forward uh, to worshiping with you again on another Wednesday night Bible study. God bless. Sorry about that, guys. My computer fell asleep. Let's. That was Pastor Lance's inner healing message for today's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. Let's get into our next song on the list. And it's until we'll sing Hallelujah. Enjoy. We'll sing Hallelujah by none other than one of the greatest bands you have here on the show, the K. Daniels, Daniels Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy. We'll sing Hallelujah. We'll sing Hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah, 
We'll sing hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah. There you go, guys. That was We'll Sing Hallelujah by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Let's get into our next song, and it's entitled Tears Are a Language by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy Tears Are a Language. Often you've wondered why Tears come into your eyes 
when burdens seem to be much more than you can stand. But God is standing near. He sees your fallen tears. Tears are a language that God understands. God sees the tears of a broken hearted soul. He sees your tears and he hears them when they fall. God weeps along with man and takes When grief has left you low, it causes tears to flow. When things have not turned out the way that you had planned, but God won't. Forget you. All his promises are true. Tears are a language that God understands. God sees the tears of a broken hearted soul. He sees your tears. And he hears them when they fall. God weeps along with man and takes him by the hand. Tears are a language that God understands. Tears There you go, guys. That was Tears Are a Language by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. Let's get into our next song, and then we'll pray that we'll play the last one. We'll end it that way. Our next song on the list is His Word by none other than the... It's been a friend guest on the show. The Light Warrior. Enjoy His Word. in the beginning the life the truth the hope the worlds came into being by the power words he spoke he sang life's song over the water and the dust bringing forth man beast and bird and he holds it all together Together now by the power of his word, his word is spirit, his word is life, his word is love, his word redemption. Jesus came down from above. 
There you go, guys. That was his word by none other than my guest on the, and friend on the show, the Light Warrior. Let's pray. Lord, we hope to come back before you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we got to learn not just about you, but about you in an inner healing sense, Lord, because a lot of people need, a lot of people need inner healing in this day and age, Lord. Even I still do to this day. We thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing everyone at the sound of my voice. Giving them their hearts' desires as long as, as long as it not be what selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from diseases like cancer, diabetes, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes and her diabetes. That's not bad no more. And Lord, heal them from diseases they contract themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, or herpes. Why? When you heal them, shows your mercy, your power, and your grace, and that you are real. I'm reminded of a scripture that you came. Through the door. Doesn't say you open the door, so you pass right straight through the door because you're all spirit at that moment. He said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger in my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? He got on his knees. And he said, Truly, you are the Son of God. And what did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But well, doesn't stop there. So, blessed are those who have not seen but still believe. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say, I have to see it to believe, because your word again, Lord, says, you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, 
And amen, do 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 do. Amen, do do do. Amen, amen, amen. Our last song on the list is Ready, Aim, Praise by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy Ready, Aim, Praise.
There you go, guys. That was Ready, Aim, Praise by none other than Dr. Tom Ray, my worship leader for over 19 years. Let's remind you of two things. Number one, download this app. It's absolutely 100% phenomenal. You can do all these wonderful, phenomenal things straight from the app. Also, guys, ask your Alexa device. Say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our show for today. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust in the Lord in all your ways, two, lead not your own understandings, and three, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>